Okay, so now what I want to do is fetch the data for our users on the server side. I'm going to be using the dummy JSON API to first of all demonstrate how to fetch data on the server side in our home component. So at the top here, what I'm going to do is create a function called get users. So const get users is a async function. So this is where we fetch data and I'm going to create a response. So we need to go into dummy JSON API and I'm going to use the users essentially in here, which is dummy JSON slash users like so. So quite simple. But if we first of all see the output, we get a list of all of these users in here that we are then going to render into our chat sidebar here. So there'll be a list down here. But eventually when we build the app, we're going to be using Firebase to fetch our users that are authenticated with our login functionality. So back in here, if we change the URL on our fetch in the get users function, this URL should be put into an ENB file somewhere hidden and then that way it protects it. But this is essentially backend code as well. So it's up to you how you want to do it, but I would recommend putting it in an ENB file moving forward. So previously there was a few ways of fetching the data, which was get server side props, get static props and get static paths. So I'm going to show you all three different ways of doing it. So first of all, we have our response in here, but I want to fetch the first example will be getting static data, which is quite simple. It is a way fetch here. And then we have a second argument like so, and it's going to be cache as the option. And we are going to have post cache, which means that this request will be cached until manually invalidated. Is similar to get static props this example and force cache is the default cache option so it can be omitted it can be changed so let's do command and click through to cache in here and the cache is optional and it's the type of request cache which is a union type so you have force cache default no cache no store only if cached and reload so you can choose whichever one you want and we also have other options like body credentials headers and so on you can read them more in the next js docs so that is how to fetch static data what i want to also show you is how to fetch dynamic data so const dynamic data is again the same as this so again we're using the same url and then instead of force cache this is going to be no store so this time the dynamic data is similar to get server side props this means that it will be refetched on every single request it will then rebuild the page on the server and then deliver it into the client. And this is also good for SEO because what will happen is Google will rebuild the page on the server. So then obviously web scrapers can see it as well. The final way to fetch data is the revalidate option. So this is where you could revalidate the cache every certain second. So in this case, it will be 10 seconds we're going to put it as. So const revalidated data is again equal to await fetch dummy JSON of users. And then this time I'm going to type in next, which essentially is true. But what I want to do is do revalidate this time. And I want to revalidate every 10 seconds. So this option means that the request should be cached with a lifetime of 10 seconds. And then every 10 seconds, it will just revalidate the data and refetch the latest data from this API. So this revalidated data is similar to get static props with the revalidated option in here. So now I've shown you a few ways of fetching the data. So what I'm going to do now is create a constant of user data, which is equal to await. And in this case, I'm going to call the dynamic data dot JSON in here like so. So this is the data I'm using which with a cache of no store. So now if I hover over user data, it's nothing is declared. So what I've done is I've already created the type for this. So in package JSON here at that level, I'm going to create a types dot D dot TS. And then I'm just going to bring in the type for this data, which is the all users. So let's bring that in. And essentially this is the type for all users. And then we just need to implement that into our page. So user data is of type all users from app types in here. And then just to close this function off, I'm just going to finally re return user data like so. So now we have access to this get users function. The difference would be now, instead of passing it down as props as you would do in Next.js, or instead of running a use effect as you would do in React, all I now need to do in here is get a constant. So con fetch users is equal to wait 
and this time I'm going to do await get users in here like so. And just finally, if you hover over it, await expressions are only allowed within async functions. So what you can do instead of export default function, we could do export default of async function in here. And now we have our fetch users on the page. So to prove and demonstrate that this works, if we do console log of fetched users, you will now see the console log being fetched on the server side, which means that this will show up in the terminal and not in the browser on the client. So if we save, as you can see here, there's an entire list of users being fetched. So now what we need to do is render out the relevant components and we will do that next.